Hey everyone, um, we're about to embark on an exciting couple of weeks of abstract expressionist painting. You are going to learn how to mix paint, um, how to make marks with paint, how to create gradations of color, how to create um, a focal area in an abstract expressionist painting, and um, what we're going to be doing is applying um, kind of a thought process that you're going to learn today. So today I want you to learn um, how a successful abstract painting is constructed and does such a thing exist? What is the value in abstract expressionist art? I want you to examine how artists have expressed emotion through the use of line, color, and shapes. Show awareness and understanding of non-objective art and learn how artists create a balanced composition and focal point using only pattern, line, and color. What is abstract expressionism? It started in the mid 1940s in New York, but its influence comes much earlier in surrealism and cubism. It can be said that it's an approach that favors spontaneous free personal expression. It involves making marks on paper and reacting to them. There is an actual organization of these marks. It's often considered America's most important contribution to modernism. You might recognize who did this painting. Look at the marks in the bottom three quarters of this painting. Who does that remind you of? What artist do those marks reminding, remind you of? Take a minute to think about that. You might have guessed this is a Van Gogh drawing. If you look at the bottom of the page, there's a lot of negative space between marks and that negative space decreases as you go back towards the horizon line. Here, look at the marks at the bottom of the page. A lot of negative space between those marks and then in the middle, a little less negative space and then less and less and less. You can automatically create a sense of depth just with mark. Here. Vincent Van Gogh not only created a sense of depth, he is leading the viewer's eye to a focal point. Can you guess what the focal point is? If you guess the house, you're right. Check this out. All of these marks are going in this direction towards the house. Look at the marks in the bo bottom of the page. See how far apart the marks are in the bottom left-hand corner? There's stippling there, a lot of negative space. Those marks become closer together as you get towards the house. Also, there's a lot of contrast and value around that house. The house is left white and there's gray around it. So Vincent van Gogh was able to use mark to create a sense of depth and a focal area and a drawing. Now let's talk about abstract expressionist painting. Like artists that use mark instead of things that are obviously objects. So this is Ross Beckner. Look at the marks at the bottom of the page and how they proceed up towards the top center. At the bottom of the page is a lot of negative space and there's less as you go up, up, up. So there's a focal area at the top. Here, focal area in the center, around the edges of this painting, there's a lot of negative space. Negative space gets less and less towards the center. That is your focal area. Here, bottom left-hand corner to the upper right-hand corner, your eye just moves right up, partially because check out in the upper right-hand corner that um, contrast between dark, that dark, dark blue and the white. There's a lot of contrast there. Also notice there's um, a beautiful set of analogous colors, the orange, the red orange and it goes into yellow and then goes into white so your eye just moves right up the painting. Jackson Pollock, that painting on the right, you can see that there is a focal area towards the center of the painting. Okay, now I want to take a minute to talk about a couple, uh, three abstract expressionist female artists. Um, remember, abstract expressionism started in the 40s. Um, this is a time when women were suppressed and not invited into galleries um, to show their work. So this was actually Jackson Pollock's wife's work. This is Carmen Herrera. She um, 
is featured in a documentary called The Hundred Year Show. It is about her and her life as a painter. She's over a hundred years old now. And um, it's pretty touching because she is over a hundred years old in a wheelchair. She's been painting her whole life. And she is so thankful to finally be able to show her art in galleries and sell them. So she can afford a personal assistant because now she is so old, she's in a wheelchair and she needs help. Agnes Martin's paintings. Now let's talk about some other types of abstract expressionism. So um, Mark Rothko, um, these are called color field paintings and notice how they're just blocks of color. You can see the artist Mark though, how the colors are blended together. Some people can just look at these paintings and really enjoy them and get lost forever. Is that you? I don't know, but really cool. Look at these colors. Again, analogous colors, color relationships, really great. Adolf Gottlieb, lots of times there's like two different drawings within one canvas. Franz Klein. This is the time I wanna to talk to you about expressionism with line. So really cool. You can see how he is putting his personal expression in his mark. Um, you guys are going through a time right now where many of you are um, are kind of, you know, going through a hard time. You're at home. Your um, sports have been postponed or canceled. Special events have been postponed or canceled. You're not able to see your friends the way you'd like to outside of just on the computer. Um, and um, what Franz Klein did um, during his, like, stressful and sad times in his life is he created some really great paintings. The trick is allowing your hand or that paintbrush to be an extension of your emotion. We practiced that a lot when we did our black and white and grayscale drawings um, at the beginning of the semester. Let's see if you can do that with your paintings. Painting can be a fantastic outlet for that. Here's another Franz Klein. Look at beautiful balance in this painting. There's yellow, red, and there's white, and a lot of physical movement with that brush. You can see the energy in that brush. Robert Motherwell. Um, I'm showing him because I just want you to think about line weight. What's line weight? Do you remember? Another way to explain line, line weight is line width. This is Fran... Um, Paul Clay, excuse me. So Paul Clay's paintings, um, this painting in particular is a great example of the type of work we're going to be creating in this class because you're really going to learn how to mix paint and how to apply paint, um, color relationships, and how to control color. Um, sometimes a little bit of one color added into another color makes a big difference. I want you to experiment with analogous colors, complementary colors, and neutrals. Neutrals are up here. These are neutrals. Neutrals are basically known as browns and grays. You get browns and grays when you mix two complementary colors together. They give your eye a break. Neutrals are very important in a painting. Otherwise, you end up with something that looks like it was done by an elementary kid, like a you know preschooler, everything straight out of the tube. Nope, we're going to be blending colors together and creating marks and putting our emotion into it. Um, we're also going to be developing paintings into focal areas. So you're going to have like a focal area in your painting. Sounds like a lot, but it's going to be fun and you're going to have a lot of pra practice along the way. So I know you can do it. Um, Mo Brooker, look at these exciting marks and layered paint in this painting. Beautiful. Look at right here and how this creates like a nice focal area, dark against light. This is my painting, my example for this class. So check it out. Here is the focal area. I have analogous colors. I have the um, peach, the yellow. Um, I have patterning or mark making that's small over here and it gets gradually bigger to here. This is showing where the focal area is, and then it gets smaller again. There's blends of color, analogous greens and yellows, all kinds of things going on in color blending. So I will ask you, 
is abstract expressionism worthwhile? You tell me.